Hey everybody, it's Stuart once again. Welcome to this video where I'll share some practical psychology tips that can help you as an entrepreneur to develop resilience and overcome your obstacles. Many of these obstacles are just blockages that prevent you from scaling. And the truth is, many entrepreneurs know how to build resilience, it's just that some of these obstacles simply act as gatekeepers to prevent you from blasting through to the successes that you need. And in this video, I'll show you how some of these psychological tips derived from the science of cognitive psychology will be able to help you to propel yourself towards those amazing goals. If you're an entrepreneur who's attempting to scale past seven figures, or if you're a professional who's attempting to break past the glass ceiling in your career, but you're feeling stuck, chances are obstacles such as perfectionism and imposter syndrome are just going to cause you to go down a vicious spiral of overworking. What exactly are the solutions that can help you to unravel this so that you can be happier, healthier and wealthier? Let's take a look at five tips that can make the difference for you. Tip number one, challenge your perfectionism. Perfectionism isn't an intention that you set for yourself when you wake up in the morning. Nobody ever stretches in the morning and says, you know what, today I'm going to be perfect and I'm going to make myself suffer because of that. Most of the time, you're starting off the day because you're thinking that whatever you're doing has got to be right. And because of that, you're going to vacillate between the decisions of what you think are going to work for you and the things that you thought other people will judge you for. So this is where perfectionism takes place. However, it is necessary for you to challenge perfectionism every step of the way. If you keep thinking, oh my goodness, if I do this, what's going to happen next? You're going to go down a train of thought that will never be resolvable. Instead, you need to be able to take some action and then move forward, get some results, and then do your reflection. Utilizing the systematic approach, can actually help you to prevent perfectionistic thinking from taking place. Utilize the idea that mistakes are actually feedback. And in your mind, develop the belief that these mistakes are eventually going to triangulate to a much more perfect direction rather than what's a perfect choice right now. So in my life, I've discovered that perfectionism doesn't help me and I want to be able to fail forward. This ability is always challenging, but the way I do it is by shifting my thought patterns. Sometimes I question myself and I second guess, but instead I install new kinds of self-talk inside my mind. For example, self-talk such as keep moving forward. We're just one minute away from taking action. Taking action in small chunks is better than executing on a perfect plan. It is risky, that's why we need to act fast. All of these internal self-talk can nudge you in the direction of taking action in spite of its imperfections. What's more important is you need to reward yourself for breaking that cycle of perfectionism. Take this video for example. I don't have a perfect script, and even if I were to have a perfect script, I'm gonna make mistakes along the way. In spite of those mistakes, I'm gonna push myself forward and work towards completion instead. Even though I don't have a perfect completion record, it's always going to be a pat on the back knowing that I've made some progress. Number two, overcoming imposter syndrome. Now this is a big one. A lot of people encounter what is known as imposter syndrome because they feel they're not good enough and so on. I've covered another video that talks about this, but one of the pivotal moments where I discovered that imposter syndrome is nearly one of my core identities. Of course, you can be an imposter if you're stepping into the wrong versions of yourself. So one of the simplest ways that I do this through the use of identity psychology is to form up a version of myself that I can step inside. Try it. Close your eyes. Think of a version of yourself that can overcome this limited obstacle. If you find yourself vacillating between procrastination and taking perfectionistic actions, think of another version of yourself that is smooth, relaxed, simply takes action and learns from curiosity about whatever result that you got. Can you find such a version of yourself in your past or perhaps you can make somebody up? Form that inside your mind and then step inside this resourceful version of yourself. What does this person say? How does this person breathe? And how does this person move? By stepping into this version of you, it's very likely that you stop thinking of the imposter and start thinking of the one that can actually make reality happen. Tip number three, avoid overworking 
but keep stretching. A lot of the time, I tell people to chase their limits. In fact, this was covered in a prior video where we talked about chasing limits. However, a lot of people don't deliberately stretch themselves in an incremental fashion day after day. Take for example, this morning when you woke up, did you set for yourself a stretch target? For instance, it might have been that you did 25 push-ups the day before, but today you can stretch to doing 30 push-ups. Now this regular way of stretching your limits is about chasing your limits because you're looking out for that glass ceiling. If you're unable to find that glass ceiling, just do some random experiment anyway so that you're telling your brain, look, you have great potential and you're just going to stretch by a little bit and a little bit over time so that you're acclimatized to becoming better and better with time. Because this way, you can extend yourself and improve the extent of which you can stretch yourself. This way, it doesn't feel like overwork when there's a sudden surge of tasks that come in. However, if you train your brain to take a break and to slack, guess what? That feeling of being able to stretch is going to shrink. And when it gets to shrink to a certain level, you're not going to want to get out of bed and stretch yourself. You will feel that it's overwhelming. That's the reason why you need to chase your limits. That's the reason why you need to acclimatize your brain to working beyond what you thought was your ceiling, just so that you can encourage yourself whenever you need to. In that case, it's prioritizing your brain for a habit of stretching and trashing your limits. Number four, developing a growth mindset. This must have been said a million and one times since Carol Dweck's 2006 book, However, there's a lot more that goes into the growth mindset than you might think. For instance, you need to apply self-leadership. I've got inside the description the links to my videos on self-leadership that you ought to review from time to time. Much of self-leadership is about internal regulation and if you know how to regulate yourself, you can always find the energy to focus on growth and learning. The key, however, is to develop a certain kind of attitude towards this growth. Is it just growth for the sake of getting more and more? No, that's not the case. It really is about curiosity to find connectedness across all the things that you've learned to discover a sense of intrigue for yourself. What actually makes you curious in the morning? Is it the way a certain technology is progressing? Is it the way that you think and therefore the way you can improve yourself on a day-to-day -day basis? Sometimes you don't have to gather new knowledge in order for you to reflect deeply with great curiosity. So once again, go inside of yourself. Think about the last time you were really curious and find a question that drives you every single morning. How do I improve? What is that one thing that I have been constantly at the top of my game of that I can double down and stretch? So that this will kickstart the growth mindset and enable you to chase after excellence. Tip number five is to manage your strengths. A lot of the time, whenever we have strengths, we don't hone them. And that's one of the reasons why chasing our limits is such an important focal principle for anybody who wants to achieve six, seven, eight figure successes. The key is to chase it to the point of failure so that you can make some reflections on it. When I say chase your limit toward failure, it really means to figure out at what point of time your strengths become either overwhelming for you or where the strengths seem to break down. After all, when you apply certain strengths, it may not be favored under certain contexts. Don't be surprised, this actually does happen. It's known as a derailment. Whenever you encounter derailments, they are really strengths that are being overplayed. Don't be disappointed, but instead realize that what you've done is you've just tipped your strength beyond a certain level of balance where it's no longer appreciated. And this is where you'll hear other people complaining against you. Oh, you're too unfair or you're too rigid. All of these statements are merely representations of your strengths gone awry. So how do you detect this? Go out and seek feedback. By looking into your strengths and getting feedback, you're asking people where you've ever had anything worth complaining about. And always receive that feedback with a great amount of respect by listening deeply and utilizing that as a means to elevate yourself. After all, if you're just on your own, you wouldn't get such valuable feedback. Through that, you can tweak some of your strengths. When would be a good time for you to apply your strengths more diligently? And when will there be a time where you just dial them down? This is where a great network can actually serve you. All you're going out to do is knowing what are some of the moments where you might tend to use your strengths too much 
and then present it to people as what is known as feed forward. Marshall Goldsmith, the world's top executive coach, once said that feed forward is far better than feedback because in feed forward, you're deliberately and proactively going out to hunt for your blind spots in an area that is already known to you to be a gap. This way, as you're seeking this out, it becomes a lot more wholesome. Rather than being defensive, you're actually seeking out the areas of improvement that you already know are good for you. This way, when you receive a hundred pieces of feed forward tips, then it becomes very easy for you to pick and choose which one is of priority that will most certainly serve you. As you can see, all of these require some form of reflection and I highly recommend that you keep a learning journal in order to apply these tips on a regular basis so that no matter how difficult your journey as an entrepreneur is, you have the ability to surge ahead, to become far better than you ever thought you could be. It's all a step-by-step -step incremental honing of your own personal capacities, but knowing that it's a never-ending progress for a 1% improvement every single day. So that from afar, whenever you encounter those peaks of difficulty, those moments where you need to strive to overcome a tragedy or a very major challenge, you've already developed the capacity within yourself to stretch and accomplish that goal. So I hope that this has been useful for you. It's very likely that with these mindsets of resiliency, you will be able to stretch towards the seven figure and eight figure mark and beyond. Remember that becoming successful always requires time, effort, and constantly exploring and reflecting on your own limitations as well as your application of your strengths. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe to this channel so that you'll be able to receive more videos and more tips in the future. We are on a mission to elevate society beyond the levels of suffering so that they can take actions for abundance and these videos are focused on creating that. If you have anybody who can benefit directly from this video, please share this on your socials so that we can reach out to more people and help them to get to those levels faster and as a community, we might be able to create a much more abundant world for ourselves as well. So in the meanwhile, stay safe and I'll see you in my next video.